and we're live. Hey guys, I think I might be a bit um, what is it called when you're when you're not used to doing something for a while, bit off kilter or uh, out of practice. That's the word, out of practice. So thank you for for uh, for watching this one. Uh, it's been a few weeks, might even be a month since we did an, um, since I did any live stream. I think the last one we di I did was um, just about talking about plunge and what was happening with that. Um, had a great time. Everybody enjoyed themselves. Um, looking forward to the next one. All right, that aside, I am um, I'm a huge fan of art. I um, being an artist. I think the first ever um, A's I ever got, and I really mean it, was an art. It was like nothing. And it made me feel so good to um, do these. It was a, it was a piece of uh, art to do with Halley's Comet. So you can see how far back that was. That was about 85 or 4 or something, maybe around that time when Halley's Comet shot across our skies. And everybody else's guys, of course. So I'm, I'm kind of, um, you know, I'm quite passionate about art, and I love all sorts of art. I don't mind what it is, and uh, of course, I don't like the extreme side. I mean, that's not for me, and I'm not into that. But I can appreciate that. That even, um, you know, that is, as long as it's not, you know, falls into the old um, underage thing. That's, you know. I'm okay with it. The other thing I um, I think I find really interesting about what's going on with the manga scene is that they've been trying to go after manga for a few years, um, but mainly the last year or two has been uh, probably the most hard assaults on anime and manga. Um, I am, um, you know, I, I've watched anime for years and I, I enjoy it i don't watch the top stuff i i you know i don't watch I, i've never watched dragon ball z i've never watched naruto and stuff like that i've, I've just only watched the first uh 13 episodes of um of one uh, one piece and uh, that's only because my friend loves one piece and uh he enjoys it and he just is always talking about it so i said yeah i'll give it a go i just don't i'm not into popular stuff because i just don't find it uh uh, it's just not me, right? I like to seek out what I like to seek out and what I find enjoyable. And um, and I haven't, re you know, I've never really got into manga as such as a reading form because it's, it's I, my brain can't kind of read backwards because I'm always right to left, right to left, right to left, or left to right, I should say, you know, and not right to left as, um, you know, as reading a manga comes to. And as um, Japanese... Um, um, they read that way, right to left, and but I have read it and I do enjoy it. I um, sometimes when I find a, an anime that is really awesome that I really really love, like Doctor Stone, blew me away. Like, I just went boom, this is just amazing, and I started reading it. Now, of course, I talked about it on on here and um, said how good it was and how uh, insightful and scientific based it was. And it really made me think about how, um, you know, how you could actually do good writing and really actually teach through it. And, um, but of course, I, you know, I do copy books as well and I write about a lot of things. And I think uh, what really uh, astounds me is that people just allow censorship to just happen without even thinking twice about it. Um, the idea that, um, that, you know, it's just one little person having a little go at, at something. It's never that. Because what happens is when somebody has a little go at somebody, other people will jump on board as well because they'll see success. Or if, if they succeed, then more people get on board and more people get on board. It's the way you write, um, rise a cult. Uh, I come from religious backgrounds. so uh, And so I've been in several different religious groups. And so I understand how cults work and not even – not saying everyone I was in was cult, just some of them that I, uh, I connected with seemed like a cult. And sometimes behavior of some individuals felt like they were a cult. And this is why sometimes um, uh, when it comes to people going off on about comic books or manga or anime or games, uh, things that are very popular, it always becomes a target for zealots 
and you can you don't have to be religious, religious to be a zealot you can just find anything and be zealous to it you can be find a bottle of you know a beer uh um, what would say uh, you know a beer um, brand or a soft drink brand or a you know or an energy drink brand or even a sports team you see that people just go nuts about it and what happens is they tell everybody about it and everybody you know that they that if you love something you tell everybody about it but the, sometimes though what i'm finding strange is that a lot of times people join groups to with ulterior motives uh you know um, or they want to change it despite the fact they joined it because they loved it in the first place and but they decide that well you know uh it's not going the way i want it to go it's not fulfilling my every single thing but rather than moving off and creating their own little thing right they would stick it out and they would just work at it from the inside until the whisper network gets going and you go oh yeah i think we should change that and tell somebody else we'll change that oh we should do that oh we should do that next thing you know the group is basically falling apart and then somebody else the person who started it all is now leading the group it's not a you know it's not people enjoying it anymore it's just one person leading it their own way one of the things that really bothers me about this whole thing coming out of australia is the idea of uh, you know we have to protect the children and i understand that fully uh, i don't have children on my, my own but i have but I do have nieces and nephews and cousins and so on. And I understand about, you know, keeping them safe and making sure that they don't, you know, cross the road without looking both sides. And that's basically what parents should be doing. So, you know, crossing the road, teaching the kids to cross the road, look on both sides. When it comes to art, when it comes to anime, when it comes to movies, when it comes to music, look at both sides, kids, and decide, is it safe out there? And the idea is that politicians have a, are in it for the long game. They're in it to uh, to keep their uh, finances going. See, if they're not in, if they're not significant, if they don't see themselves, or don't, oh, sorry, if people don't see themselves, see these politicians as significant or needful, then they'll vote somebody else in. So a lot of times, what happens is that they will stick around they'll really stick around and they'll find one thing and the next thing and the next thing. So this person that's uh, Connie Bonaris from uh, MP out of, uh, out of Australia was working for a guy called Griff, right? So he was, she was working for a male guy who had a problem with it. And his idea was that this is a gateway thing into pedophilia, into grooming children. Now, I understand grooming children. I was groomed myself. I really understand how it works So as a child. And it's not something I talk about often, and uh, it's something I'll talk about in a couple of weeks because I think uh, it needs to be talked about the grooming of boys, especially in this day and age, uh, where it seems it's okay to groom a, groom a boy on live TV or reality shows, but not girls. Because, hey, that's wrong if you do it to a young child who's female, but not if it's a young boy and he's male. So, I understand about the grooming and I understand about pedophilia and um, it hurts me when I hear people trying to uh, demean the atrocity that that is, the horror that that is, by relating it to artwork that has nothing to do with it. And when, when people do that, they don't do it for the goodness of what it is to, you know, to say, hey, you do better. Uh, you know, it's like, but they are in there to say, I'm here to take over. I'm here to force other people to believe and do what I want. And that's where I, I, under, I see it as a religious zealotry when it comes to people trying to censor and ban stuff. Now, we in the West are amaz uh, an amazing uh, society that um, allows for freedoms that most of people in the East do not enjoy not most many you know countries that don't allow their allow their allow freedoms and their things they don't need, they are so racist and um they're so biased they so their censorship is so hor horrible that you can't even be a certain color or you can't even be a sex uh prefer a certain, certain sex 
right? A certain you can't prefer a certain gender or choose to be a certain way. But in the West, we're so free to do that. So whenever I see people in the West take on these sort of zealotry, religious uh, censor, uh, censorship types of things to ban uh, things that they don't even. I don't even think this woman understands anything about manga or the different facets. See, look, I can look behind me and I can pick out a comic book or a manga and on the back of it will say a grading system, right? So everything we have in society in the West is graded. We say this is for general audience, this is for parental guidance with the 30 and under 30 so need to have a child, uh, sorry, have a parent or a guardian with them. Um, I've actually been in a movie where I've saw, uh, went into a movie where uh, I think it was like 20, or 19, in the 90s when I saw a young girl and then I said, wait, you know, and I went to the manager uh, at the theater and I said, hey, dude, what's up with, you know, letting these young girls in? Oh, they came in with a guardian. I said, I don't see any guardian though. You know, so I'm, I'm talking about this in that way. I even one time I, I had to walk my um, uh, my, uh, my cousin back to the warehouse and say, because he, he'd got an R18 game. He's only, he's under 13 and he, was, he had an R18 game. With, um, and and I went back and I said, what's up with this? He said, well, we thought, you know, you were this guardian. I said, no, no, dude, 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 this kid's only, he's not even 13 yet. And you let him buy an 18 year old, um, you know, 18 thing. I said, look, Let's let's exchange this and take that back. And this is what it comes down to. This is about just education, right? It's not about um, like there is reasons why we have grading systems, and they are important to have. And I think the idea that we um, we allow people to just walk all over things uh, because they have uh, positions of power. And like I've said before, I don't trust people in authority, and I never will. But I will, I'll listen to them. And so when I see people like um, this person, uh, Connie Bonaro is over in Australia, in a position of ultimate power when it comes to this, over art, and not only just her, but working with other people in power to censor artwork. I do not like it. I don't like censorship because it reminds me of McCarthyism when they used to hunt down um, um, everybody that sort of might have had an affiliation with communism, they would hunt them down, they would imprison them. In the 1950s, they went after comic books. There were girls reading comics books way back in 1950s and enjoying it. But someone decided it was wrong, that these comic books was wrong. Girl, you know, girls shouldn't be reading them. And so we had to spend another 40 odd years before girls got back into reading comic books. And now, they're, now girls are enjoying it, which is amazing. Females are getting into comic books, and it's cool. But even with that, you have other people who are coming in and saying, well, you know, we need to change this, we need to change that, which is sad because here's the thing. When you enjoy something, why change it, right? What's the point of changing it? If you're enjoying something, why change it? If you don't like it, move on to something else. I understand that. But we are, I, want to, I also understand the idea of, um, you know, making sure that the grading system works. And that's all you got to work with, the grading system, right? Um, nobody, you know, and the education is that everybody that works in a store should be educated, right? Um, even the other day when we were at, um, we were at a plunge, I, I said to the young volunteers that were there, I said, this is, a, this is a mature, this is for children, and this is for everybody, all right? So I straight away went and did that before we even open up. So they were aware, right, that, that this is where this is at, so that we don't have a trouble. And then I also told them that I, this, my education from this came from an education that a friend of mine who owned a comic store, you know, told me 10 years ago, where he had run in with a grandmother had come in looking for a comic book that looked really, you know, cute, right? It was about cats. And she thought, I'm going to buy this for my niece or nephew or whoever it was. It turned out to be an adult book. And so my friend had to educate the grandmother about this. And this is what it's about. It's about education. And I think the idea that you can just blatantly censor stuff that you don't understand is wrong. And it's downright evil in a way because you're stopping people who actually enjoy that or are old enough, right, who, is, who it's meant for to enjoy. And you're, you're going to be a gatekeeper for the enjoyment of everybody else 
because you just don't believe it. And this is why I don't like anything, when it, even when it comes to comics, when people start going off about this, where they start saying, I mean, I had a situation where someone didn't like my artwork that I put out for something. They said, well, there wasn't. Uh, you, I'd taken out a female. And I said, okay, but I'd taken out the male as well. So the person did not realize that the sexism in the comment and I had to, I went to my friends, I said, what do you think of this? And I had to be educated myself, I said, well, dude, that's, that's sexist, don't you think? I said, actually, yeah, it is sexism, isn't it? That somebody would go out and only look at one side and not look at the other side. And the other thing is that um, NPCs are very, very smart at these things because they're all about themselves. They, they like to uh, make themselves look good. NPCs are non-playable content, you gamers know this. All right, so these are people that just hang around. They're not even part of the game. They just, I mean, they're, they're part of the game, but they're just there doing nothing. And I think the idea is that if we're silent, right, we'll then face again the same thing that happened 50 odd years ago, right, in the 1950s. So it's what, where are we, 70 years ago? So we'll lose a whole lot of readership and a whole lot of creative content uh, from that's meant for adults, meant for youth, you know, from younger people. And what they'll do, they'll start doing that. I remember when Harry Potter came out, right? Harry Potter, guys. And there was groups of people that were against Harry Potter because what they thought it was, witch, you know, about witchcraft and all that. So you can see how it works, right? D&D, &D, right? In the 80s, it was like about, oh, they're, they're casting spells, they're summoning demons in the, in the, in, in the basement. And here we are, we're still enjoying it. And now they're turning around again, going after the and stuff and going after Magic the Gathering. Um, and these are people that don't actually play it, right? They don't even know what, how it works. Uh, next, and they'll be going about, you know, uh, other, like nothing. They'll go after one piece. They'll go, oh, his, you know, his arm is too long. Or this, he maybe it's making a different signal. I don't even understand most of what's going on when it comes to some, some of the anime. But I, I'm an adult. And, you know, so I have a choice over what I watch and what I don't watch. Um, but I still, I still censor myself to watch what I watch and watch I don't watch because it depends on my mood. And also I have different tastes. I don't like horror um, movies. I, will, I might watch one a month, and even that's hard for me to watch. When I used to, when I was a, in my teens, I used to love horror movies. I used to watch every single horror movie that came out because I was a movie fan. I'd watch anything that was coming out, right? And that's worked up to me where I write about everything. The idea that um, we can allow people to just say what they want and censor what they want without any contest, without any protest, is a bad thing. And this is a legitimate protest, right? So you, you legitimately have to stand up and say, listen, we don't want you censoring our free freedom of creators. Um, and because even creators themselves censor themselves, right? When I, when I write, I censor myself. Like um, I was looking at a page and it had, a, um, it had an ape scene in it, right? And I, with the R in the front, right? And, and, and um, because it had to do with drugs, um, and had to deal with a bad guy doing a bad thing. And I never showed it because I myself don't like that thing. I mean, I don't mean in that way. I mean, I don't like seeing it. I don't like seeing it in movies. I don't like seeing it anything. So I myself went out and made sure that I just used speech bubbles in the way that connected that you never saw that assault. Because I, you know, like I said, I have myself or censor myself to a certain degree as long as I can see myself, I can see the story working out without that needing to be in it. And that's the same when it comes with any creators, right? Uh, and, and here's the thing, not everybody likes everything, all right? You might not like anime, I might not like anime, right? But somebody else will, and they'll enjoy it. Or you might not like comic books, and I love comic books, and I'll collect it, but you won't even read it, and you'll be into novels. But here's the thing, how about when they come after novels? And I like that I was just saying, Harry Potter. How about when they come after that sort of stuff? What happens then? Are you going to stand up and go, no, I, I don't think you should, uh, you know, treat this like, you know, try to censor this. Then we wouldn't have had all these amazing Harry Potter things, the stories, the movies, the pop culture, you know, um, 
and the franchise, the amazing way kids got into reading and enjoying it, right? What if they got stopped straight away after the first book, right? What happens then? And the same thing happen, will happen now. If we start letting these people step on, on manga and anime, they'll come after something else next time. And this is how it works. People don't just stick with one thing. These types of people, they do not just stand with one thing. It's one thing today, it'll be one thing, next thing another day, because that's what they want. They want to just keep rolling with the friggin' train, right? Getting more carts on with more clout on there. So tomorrow, like in the, in the 80s and 90s, I think it was with music, and you had the censorship uh, emblem, which is now a joke, right? Uh, it was like a parental advisory. It was black and white, had everything. And I spoke about this a few years ago when I was on radio about this, that it made, what it became was that you, you as, an, uh, as, a, uh, as a teenager would look for that symbol, that, that sticker on, those, on that uh, packaged um, music. You'd look for the Two Life Crew, you know, or the NWA, or uh, I think it was uh, some, some uh, uh, like uh, Twisted Sister album or something that had a white, uh, white rap, uh, sorry, a clear film wrapping on it with this, with this black and white uh, parent advisory sticker on it. Contains explicit lyrics. One thing I saw the other day, right, in a game was uh, parent advisory, Girl, uh, boys love me on a t-shirt. This is how much it became a joke, all right? And I'm even thinking of making something like that, you know? Something like parental advisory, I love comics, all right? You know, or I read comics because I think it's just, this is what happens, that people, after a while, we just become blasé about this. But the other thing is that if we do become blasé to a point and allow these people to just keep stomping on us and stomping on what we love, and stomping on art and creators and writers, then it becomes a sad day for um, for what we can do with our culture as a, you know, especially with pop culture, what we enjoy, how much freedom we have and how much we can um, further people enjoying it and uh, creating and stuff. And I think, um, I'm not gonna care, do too much, talk about too much about that today. I've, I've said what I've said on, uh, on, the, on the post, um, but I just wanted, because I, I mean, I'm passionate about this because I'm an artist as well as a writer. So it falls into, into my purview. And the other thing I do want to say is that I love manga and I love anime. I might not read as much as I love manga. I mean, as much as I should be reading manga. But when I do, I, when I, you know, I turn on to it and I read it and I do enjoy it. Uh, but I'm an anime fan. I watched anime all last night. I was watching Do, um, Doro, Red Doro or Red Doro. And then I was watching Kataska. What an amazing two series. Um, you know, but I don't like some of the English translations of that. But, so I keep the subtitles on. That's on Netflix, if you guys think, all right? About the, the one, second one's about the Katas, Katasga or something like that. It's about the insect. Very cool. Uh, of course, hey, mature. It's got R16 on it, right? If I remember right. You know, and I, then I rewatched some of. Uh, 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 Kusanagi, you guys would know who I'm talking about. Major Kusanagi, right? And, uh, oh yeah, uh, Ghost in the Shell. I love that series. Uh, the new one's pretty cool. Um, I was a bit, I feel a bit of, felt a bit ripped off when they didn't finish the arc. You know, uh, they just, it's, we've got to wait for the next season. And the other one I was talking about, like, Adora Hidoro, horror, right? R16's got the rating right there. This is what I'm talking about. There's ratings on what we what we get to enjoy. So if you're just an idiot comes come into a store and go, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, don't want that, and then go on to say all your stores should not have it. That's not educating yourself about what's going on, about this art form. Um, and I think that's what it comes down to is ignorance, right? And uh and being not educated about what um what's out there for people to enjoy. And like I said, uh, you know, there's ratings. Uh, let me see, All right? T, right here, uh, if you can just see that. That's a T right there, okay? Uh, for older teens, and this is on Dead Man Wonderland. Great series, right? So this person comes in the store and goes, that, that, that's gotta go. 
this is bad, not even probably reading it. She just looks at the artwork, not going, what's going on in that? What's it about? Not even looking at the age um, grading and makes a judgment on it. And it's easy to do that, to run to judgment. That's why I, I've, I wait for things now. I, 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 um, I used to rush into stuff, as I said, but now I kind of wait and try to think through what I got to think through and let things uh, fester itself in my brain a bit, get a bit more education, ask around, and then come and talk about it or talk, you know, actually respond. Because I find that um, rushing to judgments only makes, you know, makes an ass out of me. You know, like they say, assume, right? Makes an ass out of you and me. And I don't want to, you know, it's like I'm 47 now and I'm still learning about how to be a better person. And I think, um, I think we'll get there someday but I don't think it'll be before I die, that's for sure. So I think um, the best thing I can say about this is, look, don't let this happen in New Zealand. Don't let these Aussies start pushing into New Zealand's uh, freedoms, especially when it comes to art, especially when it comes to comic books. This is why I'm a bit passionate. Um, well, I'm really passionate about this. Um, and I'm going to talk about this next week with an actual art teacher about censorship and art and um this is going to be next sunday night at seven o'clock uh in new zealand um so if you guys are watching from overseas the same time i came on today is the same time will be next week um uh, it'll be the first proper interview i've done for probably a month and um and richard cranenborough uh, he's uh he's he taught me up for a couple of months uh, but he's a great, uh, he's, a, he's been a teacher, he's been a designer, he's now a gallery owner, and he's, he's got a passion for pop art and pop um, comics and stuff. And so he, um, you know, and um, he sees that as just as great as Mozart, um, not Mozart, sorry, uh, as uh, Da Vinci, right? Fine art. He sees, and I, and I think of art and comic art as the same thing. I think CG art is as great as any Da Vinci work i'm not sorry wasn't he a sculpture anyway uh you guys know who i mean oh clint talk about good stuff clint i love cg rendered artwork i think the guys who do game art are amazing uh, it sometimes blows me away when i look at it and go i wish i'd gone to do that <laughs> i wish i learned how to do that but i mean i stopped doing that sort of work for a few years back you know uh like free um actual fine art i should say because i used to do fine art uh, and as you know, I do sculpture and I do art, um, you know, 2D art and 3D art as well. So I'm, I think the idea um, I want to leave you with is that don't let people just push in into your what you love, what your interests are, and try to change you to change what you love, right? Uh, I see this in comic books. I've seen it for a few years. Uh, and you can see how bad comic book has become, comic book industry has become. They, they, our com manga and anime outsells comic books hands down. And that's, you know, that's what happens when you make it, and you know, when you attack things, and you know, when you try to change what is happening, which is good, which everybody loves. And that's happened, like you know, the last what five, seven years in comic books. So yeah, and the other thing, I was just finishing off. Like I, I don't really want. I sort of want to talk about it, don't want to talk about it. Um, Tom King today, um, this week, just went after uh, a artist, uh, and, you know, I mentioned Batman. Uh, um, Tom King's a Batman writer. He's atrocious. I, I really, I really, he put me off reading Batman, and now I'm blocked, right? I said that, I said, you put, you know, I told him, you know, I don't know how you could attack an Asian artist like Jay Lee, who they actually hired to work as a very artist on a, on a Watchman Roaches book that Tom King was writing, an employee going at his at his employers over um, what the employer chooses to do, that really makes me laugh. But anyway, so you know, I said, look, you not only are you, you know basically the guys, you know, going off at a, at trying to get him cancelled, and not only that, trying to make, stop him from earning a living. And this is what it comes down to when you've got people with this much clout, they can do whatever they want unless you push back and say, no, you shouldn't be doing this to other people. You shouldn't be trying to take away their livelihoods. Um, and, and then I got blocked, right? Because, I, you know, 
it's weird that like he's all about diversity, old Paul, um, J, um, sorry, Tom King. But, you know, he's, he's okay to go after an Indian, block an Indian and also go after an Asian guy and try to not uh, help him, let him earn a living. I think the idea um, is that these guys are destroying the comic book industry and they don't realize that because all they're after is clout and Twitter likes. But Twitter likes don't get you money. They don't get you paid. You know, uh, they don't do anything in real life. Um, the only time you can actually do anything is actually go out and buy stuff and people buy stuff or like your stuff. And a lot of people have basically said, we're not going to buy your stuff anymore, Tom King. I mean, I stopped buying um, the Batman books because I just didn't like his writing. The guy made Batman into a wuss, into a miserable, depressed person. Um, and I think, um, like I said, you know, he got the job, he got it right, and he ruined it. Good on him, <laughs> right? Uh, but then he goes in after somebody else. But anyway, beside the point. Now, like I said earlier on, that um, you know, I used to be uh, part of religious groups. I remember um, talking about sexism, right? We were doing, like, I used to do, run a grammar group at one time in a religious um, group, um, church. One time we did, a, we used to do productions with children, with the school, and then we used to do our own productions as a, you know, in a mature kind of settings. I'm not mature settings, but I mean, us older and younger, you know, kind of like teenagers or whatever, uh, Gen X, you know, whatever, back in the ni um, 2000s and, um, and late um, 1990s. One time we were doing this, sh um, um, and this is what I'm telling what I'm saying is I'm not into this thing uh, and so much against it. We had these young girls who were doing angels. They love, they dressed up and wanted to be angels. And they were like freaking five, seven year olds, right? And um, so they wanted to be part of this production group that um, was put up by one of the two teachers. I came on board and I was playing this, uh, this older, uh, preacher or rap, a rat or something and rapping right it was like one time i was like the rapping preacher the other time i was a rapping rat and um that's because i was actually rapping back then and I had in a little group uh band and one lady right basically in the, in the 40s um came across and said well girls shouldn't be angels because it doesn't say so in the Bible. There's never mention of any angel, female angels. And we're like, but these young girls are having so much fun. Their mom and dad, um, dads have gotten their the costumes, got their wings on, they got their halo on, you know, around their head. And, uh, and you know, some of them actually worked on their own costumes and they look great. Uh, there was nothing fetish or, um, you know, some weird thing going on. It was just these young girls were angels were doing some separate some play uh religious play and so she didn't like it she was she started causing a fuss about these young girls being angels and it just i, I couldn't i sort of couldn't believe it we all couldn't believe that someone would have a problem with young girls having fun dressing up as angels uh, on a stage and waving up to their mom and dads because they're so happy and excited about doing this thing. Uh, and it's just like, she had to be told, uh, you shouldn't have a thing in here because that's not your job. This is to do with the school uh, production. This is the young girls and they, they want to dress up and be angels. So that's okay. You know, be quiet, go to the side. And, and this is what I mean about when I was talking about earlier about religious zealotry when it comes to uh, these sort of things. Um, that you can, you know, it, it, it's almost like a religious um, dogmatic thing where they hunt out things that they see themselves uh, as evil or wrong and um, look for that little um, red devil under the bed or the monster under the bed. Uh, and everything. And imagine like uh, the parents being told that, hey, that somebody doesn't want your daughter to be dressed up as an angel. You're a bad person for make, you know, for having a daughter dress up as an angel. 
Imagine what those parents would think. I've sent my kids to your school and my kids are enjoying themselves and here's somebody that's got nothing to do with it. It's not, it's not even a teacher or someone. It's now some, you know, or part of the education system. It's having a go at telling these kids to not do that. Um, and um, and then probably, you know, if, that, if it got to the things, the parents, they would make a fuss about it because they you know, they'd go, well, well, I'm going to pull my kids out. I'm not going to pay my fees, right? And that's how it works, all right? So the way to deal with politicians who work this way is to go, yeah, we're going to vote you out. We're not going to support you. Uh, if you have people who start, doing it, well, we're not going to, you know, you know, money money is where it's all at when it comes to these things. It's like if people, um, you know, start behaving in a way that they're censoring and taking away your freedoms, the first way to do it is either vote them out or not support them financially. Um and it's um, because money talks, right? BS walks. It's, all, it's the bottom line when it comes to these things in business. Um, and, yeah, manga and anime is a business. Comic books is a business. Um, music, art, gaming, it's all a business. The problem is that a lot of times people who don't, um, and I'm, I find myself repeating myself, but I'm just going to close off here. Uh, they have nothing to do with it. They don't really enjoy these things, but they see something wrong with it because Everybody's got a goat, right? Everybody's got got a little piece, um, a block. I can't even think of what I'm thinking of here right now. Um, you know, a chip on the shoulder is what I'm trying to. Everybody's got a chip on the shoulder, and um, and they um, they want to pass the chip on to you, or they want to whack you with that chip, that piece of wood, so that you come into line and you do what they say. But like I said. Um, I enjoy our Western freedoms we have in New Zealand. And in the West, we have the most freedoms compared to most of the other countries in the world. And I think uh, if we don't value that enough, people will erode our freedoms. They will take it away little by little. And they'll start with saying, got to think about the children, got to protect the children, yet not really concentrating on the actual crimes or actual things that are happening in real life, but they want rather talk about fantasy and uh, push their um, push their motives onto fantasy rather than deal with real life situations. And I've talked about that, how I, uh, I you know, my, my whole idea about how to um, help kids and teenagers locally is to actually get them into art and involved into, you know, into the pop culture and stuff, to see them enjoying this stuff. That's a good thing. Now, what if I came across and said, don't be into that. This is horrible stuff. There's, that's a negative thing now. Now they'll see that it's negative and then they'll feel bad about it. If they go home, they feel bad about writing and drawing. They'll feel negative and they'll get depressed. And then they'll pull away from their friends and stuff. And I think, um, you know, you, th you think about this young, these young girls. I think there were four or five of them, or maybe six. Angels being told that they couldn't do this because guess what? Girls aren't allowed to be angels, right? So sexism, same as I was saying before. Oh, there's no girls on that poster anymore. And oh, I'm sorry, in that um, in that artwork. Well, that's sexism as well because there's no boys in that as well. And the other thing, think about if you really care about the children, then educate them, right? educate them on what's good, what's bad, what the grading system means. No, son, you can't have this because it's R13 and you're only four, uh, you're only seven years old. Or no, you're, it's R18 and you're only 14 years old, right? Or daughter and so on. No, you can't dress that way because it's such and such, because you're still a young kid. You still need to learn about how to be, you know, mature and to where you get to, you know, these are stages, biological stages in our lives. So we, how we grow. I mean, like I said, I'm 47 and I'm still learning about how to be adult, you know, um, and, um, but I don't want to be, adult, but I'm, but I am an adult. And that means I mean, I have to make adult choices, even though I enjoy things like, you know, soft toys with um, Aquaman on them, Harlequin on them, you know, that I like figures and stuff and collecting them. I like anime and manga. You know, and and I don't want to see all that go away because somebody 
has got a has a good chip on the shoulder, or not only that, but they are narcissists who are looking for self gratification at the expense of others, and this is what it really comes down to. Um, you know, getting um, getting clout on the expense of others, getting um, going, uh, getting. Um, Earning Twitter likes and uh, social media fandom on the backs of others and cancelling others and destroying other stuff, other people's work. Like I said about Tom King there with Jay Lee, uh, you know, going after him for a cover because he did a, got paid to do another cover. I mean, if I could afford to, I'd get Tom, Jay Lee to do something for us, right? But it's, it's, it's you know, and I'm not, I've, we've got enough people, why would we want to go to reach somebody else? So, but that's all, you know, but when it comes down to it, you can't let people step on what you enjoy without answering for what their motives are. And um, and you can't, and it's really hard to judge people's motives now because um, you don't know um, what they you know what what it is at face value. You can I, I always take people at face value. I just go, hey, nice to meet you. Um, are you into this sort of stuff? Yeah, me too. Would you like to help us out? Would you like to be part of us? Yeah, cool. And then, you know, it turns out that um, my motives are different as well. I, maybe I'm not going to gel with that person later on or if I'm, you know, I might be gelling really well. And these are things that um, takes time to work out. But but when you got people that just straight up come up with the motive and say, we want to want you to get rid of these books. And they used to have book burnings. And this is what I fear about these situations. I saw a friend earlier on who loves manga and um, you know and anime more than I do. Um, and uh, you know, and I said to him, "Look, we've had book burnings in the past where people would just have piles of books and they'll just burn them. And this is where this is heading. Where will people? Because if you don't burn the book, then you're a bad guy, right?" And this is what comes out, uh, that's what's happening now with cancel culture, that if you don't back what I like, then you're a bad guy. And this is the behavior that we're seeing, and it's not cool because it it, um, it takes away from everybody enjoying things. And uh, it hurts the whole culture that we, you know, that the community enjoyments that we have. And uh, because you're always going to have people who, are, who have an ulterior motive about things, but you have to have a backbone and say, look, no, nah, I'm not, you know, I think you should move on or, you know, do something else or create your own. My whole answer is whenever somebody comes to me and goes, you should do this and this, I'm like, yeah, you know, I think you should do it. It's not my thing. Go create something, you know, go go write something, go do it, um, you know, because I'm, I can't do everything and, and I don't expect to do everything. And I don't expect to do everybody else's thing either. I expect people to do whatever they want to do. Uh, if they have a problem with what I do, I just go, go do your thing. There's no, there's room for everybody to do their thing. And that's what the great thing about being the West is that you can actually choose to do what you want to do. As long as you're not physically harming anyone. And if you're not doing any dodgy stuff, you know, uh, and um, it's go create. Uh, and enjoy life, enjoy what you love. Uh, just, you know, have a backbone about it. Stand up for what you love and what you enjoy. Uh, as long as it's consensual, as long as it's legal. Uh, but the problem here is that these guys are trying to make it illegal. And that's what I do not like. Uh, because they used to have book burnings. And I don't want to see manga and anime book burnings. Just want to say that, right? So uh, thank you for watching. I uh, doubled my time. I didn't expect it to, but I, hopefully you understand where I'm coming from when I speak about these things um, because I've had experience with zealotry uh, in myself as well. I, you know, I've been very zealous about shit, certain things in the past. So I've, you know, over time I've learned not to be so hyper about these things and just work through it in my brain and work through it by listening to others and talking about it. And like I said, manga and anime have a grading system, just like comic books. You'll see a G, you'll see a PG. Uh, I think you'll see a T, not a PG. Uh, and then you'll see an MR. 
And then some books will have an R on it because we have a grading system about these things. And that's the way in the West we do things. We grade on who can read what and who can, you know, what age group can do what. You know, you, like you can't drive a car unless you have such a thing. You can't go into a bar without a certain age, right? And so basically blatantly saying, well, this isn't for everybody anymore, so get rid of it. It's not cool. Um, so anyway, I'm going to tie off here. I don't want to take any more time, and thank you for watching. Um, it's been a while. I'm a bit out of sync, as I said, uh, about how, how to do this, but hopefully – next week when we have an interview with Richard Carimbra talking about censorship and art and he's you know he's got 40 probably odd years of experience in this uh, about art as a teacher and um and uh yeah it's a designer so thank you for joining me kakite uh, ano wherever you are be at peace with yourself and with others I uh, hope you're safe and um do one of the greatest things is do unto others what you want them to do to you, right? Behave in a way that you want others to behave towards you. And, uh, you know, that's, the, that's all we can do. And uh, the world will be a better place if that's how we behave. And uh, hopefully um, I'm trying that myself. I'm not where I want to be right away, but I'm trying to get there, right? So, uh, you know, little steps. And hopefully... Uh, you're taking little steps towards bearing yourself as well. And like, you know, as I said, if you thought about an idea that'll make a good comic book or a manga or a story, get to it. Start writing it down. Do some art. Uh, don't be, and the other thing, don't be put off by how good other people are doing it. Uh, I found that quite early on, that like I wasn't, uh, I, uh, I started feeling a bit, you know, put off because I think, oh, they. Why should I be doing this stuff? Because so many people are doing it. But each one of us can have a different twist on thing on stories and art. So go for it. Um, Kakitiano, have farewell. Be well.